What do you do if you need a loan to flip a house, but you can't just go to a traditional bank either because you don't have a proven track record or you're already fully leveraged? Well, normally your only solution would be to go to a private investor who can offer you what's called a hard money loan. Basically, they would use your piece of real estate as collateral in case you didn't pay the loan back. And in exchange, they would give you a short term high interest loan for a time period of around one to three years. But what if you don't have rich contacts who can offer you those kinds of loans? Or what if you wanna be the one offering those loans to people flipping the houses in order to make that sweet, sweet interest. How do you do that without having tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank to fully fund a flip? Well, that's where a website called Ground Floor tries to come in. Hey everyone, and welcome to FinTech. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the real estate investing platform, Ground Floor. Looking at how the site works, walking through setting up an account for myself, and maybe even making an investment if I find something that looks interesting. This video was made in partnership with moneymade.io, which is a platform that lets you discover, learn about, and invest in different types of investments. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna check them out. Ground Floor offers a platform for people to crowdsource hard money loans. To really explain what that means, basically when someone decides to buy a house, renovate it, and then sell it at a higher price, a lot of the time someone will take what's called a hard money loan in order to cover the cost of the renovations and improvements. But with Ground Floor, instead of needing to go to one really rich person who can afford to fund your entire flip, instead you would go to the platform and try to crowdfund your loan through a whole bunch of people online. Ground Floor offers their services both to the people who need the loan for the flip and the people who want to make money by investing in these kinds of flips. It's kind of similar to other lending sites such as Lending Club, only they're very, very focused specifically on this type of real estate loan. And they're only able to do this because of a change in regulations called Regulation A Plus back in 2015. So let's start off by going through the site. So when you first go to Ground Floor's website, they have this page here, which talks about what the site is actually for, how you can make use of it, and how it could actually make you money. And they talk about here how you can invest with as little as $10 and make an interest rate of 10%. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but for now, let's just log in and start looking at the actual site. Now, when you first get here, it asks you to set up your account and you can do this by investing anywhere between 100 and as high as $25,000. I'm gonna skip this for now because I don't wanna put any money in. And so then next up, it shows you some potential investments that you can make. Now, there are kind of two different sections of ground floor. One is this investing section, which appeals to people like me who might want to put money into one of these flips and then there's another section of the site specifically for borrowers who plan to actually do the real work of flipping the property and we'll look at that a little bit but most of this video is going to be focused on the investors so looking at these available investments here you can see that you have the different addresses for the different houses that are going to be flipped you can see what interest rate the loan is going to pay how long the loan is going to last for and what percentage of the after repair value this loan is for so basically when you take a house its initial value might be let's say hundred thousand dollars and they want to put twenty five thousand dollars into it to fixing up the house and then once it's all fixed up they think they could sell it for one hundred fifty thousand dollars well in that case this after repair value percentage would be the twenty five thousand dollars that they borrow divided by the one hundred fifty thousand dollars that the house is going to be worth in the end so basically the lower the arv percentage is the lower risk the actual loan is because you don't need as much appreciation to break even on the loan now next up we have here that it says the payment schedule is deferred. So for all of these loans, you're not going to receive regular payments for the loans. Instead, you'll receive a lump sum once the loan is fully paid off after the house has been flipped. Next up, you can see how many people are actively invested in this property, what the total loan amount is for, as well as how much of the loan is remaining to be offered. So for this first one right here, we can see that the original loan was for $425,000 and there's still around $130,000 left to be invested here. So if I wanted to, I could invest $10 or $20 into this right now. I could hold on to this loan until the term ended. Now also on this page, you'll notice on the left side here, there's kind of a picture of the house. And then there's also this rating here. So you have C, C, B, C, C. This is supposed to be the risk level of the loan. So this B loan here is considered to be less risky than the C loans. And we'll see a little bit later how they determine those ratings. It's not really all that quantitative, but it does offer some qualitative metrics. So you can kind of get your head around how they're actually determining what is riskier. So now let's actually look into one of these in a little bit more detail. Let's just click on the first one here. In here, we can see a project summary of what the loan is for. So again, you can see the rate, how long the term is for, what the ARV is, as well as how much is left to be invested. A couple other things here, you can see who is actually making this borrow. So in this case, it's Theodore Hawkins of Chalk LLC. And if you click the name, 
it'll take you down to this borrower summary section. And you can see here that this guy, it looks like he hasn't taken any loans from ground floor before. He has zero loans funded in the past, but he does say that he's done projects in the past. Now, if we go back to the top, we can also see your loan position. So you're the first lien on this property. If you wanna go into more detail, you can click in the LRO agreement here. I'm not gonna go through all this, but this is all the legal jargon that you would need to know for the loan. And if you scroll down a little more here, you can see the financial overview for this property. So this really illustrates how this whole process is going to work. On the left side here, you can see how much money the original investor put into this property. So in this case, $161,000. Next, you can see how much they're actually looking for from ground floor, which is $850,000. And then when you total those two up, that's how much money it costs to both purchase the property and make the actual renovations. So just over $1 million into this property. Now they are forecasting that after this has been fixed and then eventually flipped, they can sell it for $1.2 million, which means that they're making a profit of $203,000. Now the size of this money doesn't really determine how much you as an investor get paid out because you're investing in the loan. You're not investing in the actual property. You would still expect to be paid out your 9.7% interest regardless. So assuming this loan is actually paid back successfully and there is some risk there, you will get your 9.7% interest rate back regardless of what the actual property does because you're a loan investor. Additionally, ground floor does not charge you as an investor any fees for investing in this property. So back to this page here, if we scroll down past the loans that are currently being funded, we can also see projects that were actually successfully repaid recently. Now you see that even some of the projects here that have a rating of a D or a C have actually been repaid. And in general, the higher the risk that investment is, the higher rate of return they're going to give you. So this one right here is paying out a 12% rate of return because it had a D rating in terms of risk. Now let's go into the loan details here to understand why it had that rating. So if we look at this here, we can see that this loan was paying back 12% and this loan was fully repaid on February 2nd, 2021, even though it didn't mature until November. So it looks like they paid it back early. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, there's this update section that Ground Floor offers where they basically tell you what has happened in the loan so far. So if we go back to November of 2020, when they first made this loan, they talk about the different renovations that they're making. So in this case, they were doing landscape and cleanup, electric and plumbing work, demolition, bathroom and closet repair, floor renovations. And then on December 7th, they said that the project was totally complete. A couple weeks later, they had a contract with someone to buy the property from them. And then finally in February of this year, it was fully paid off. I really like this section because I think as an investor, I would like to know how far along the projects are and when I'm likely to get my money back, especially if that's gonna happen months before the loan is actually due, like in this case. Now I did say I was going to look more into why this particular property had a D in terms of risk. And we can see that by going down here. So on the right side of the page here, we can see the grading factors that affect the rating that ground floor gives to these different investments. And these are rated in order of importance. So the most important thing here is the loan to ARV score. They explain the same thing here that I talked about earlier, where basically a lower ARV is better. So in this case, we can see that this person had $28,000 invested of their own money. They took $109,000 from ground floor and they're expecting to make a profit of $36,000. So if you take $109,000 divided by $173,000, you'll get the ARV percentage that they calculated. Now they got half points in this section. So it looks like this is kind of in the midpoint of the offerings that ground floor has. Below this, they have the quality of the valuation report. In that case, I'm guessing it's just how detailed and how well supported their after repair value is going to be. When you're evaluating these properties, it's just based on comparable properties in the area. And I guess it's really up to ground floor to determine how well they actually value these properties or how well supported those valuations are. Now it looks like in this case, one of the big hits that this property took is skin in the game, which makes sense. This person only invested $28,000 and they were expecting the after repair value to be $173,000. Obviously having more skin in the game is gonna make you more likely to complete the project successfully. So they only got a three out of 10 in this area. Next up is location. I don't know exactly what goes into this rating here. Maybe it's based on how much that area is increasing in value, or maybe it's something more subjective on ground floor side. I wish they offered a little bit more detail into what this meant. Next on the list is borrower experience. And in this case, they only got a one out of five. So if we go up to the person who invested in this, it looks like Elizabeth and Company Realty. I'm guessing they don't have a huge amount of experience in fix and flips. And they probably, this is their first loan that they made on ground floor's platform. So the more times that you've made successful investments using ground floor, the higher your score is gonna be in this area. And then finally, the last one here is borrower commitment. And this, you either get a one or a zero. So if we look at this here, zero means that this is a part-time thing for the borrower. And one means it's a full-time thing. So if this is someone just doing a fix and flip on the side, in addition to their day job, they're gonna get a point deducted here. But it looks like they take the totality 
totality of these points in determining how risky this property actually is. Now you'll notice that nowhere in here do they actually check the credit worthiness of the person making the loan. And that's because these loans are designed for a very short time period with a very specific payoff criteria. Basically the idea here is if you have someone who has an absolutely awful credit score, but they find a property which if they put $25,000 into it to improve it is gonna increase $100,000 in value, you don't care how bad their credit score is because they have a good solid business plan for making money in this specific scenario. Additionally, the risk is a little bit lower because if they fail to pay off the loan, you at least get the house as collateral so it will defray your costs at least a little bit. Ground Floor actually lists out four types of risks that investors could face by investing in these types of loans. The first is default risk. These investments are not the same thing as a government treasury bond and they're not FDIC insured. So if you put a thousand dollars into this, there is the chance that you will never get that money back if this person defaults on the loan. Another risk here is inflation risk. Because these loans are for a set period and your rate is locked during that period, if inflation were to go up dramatically, your rate will not adjust with inflation. So there's a risk there that you're going to make either less money than you thought or even lose money if inflation goes up dramatically enough. That being said, most of the rates on here are over 8%. So I think it's pretty unlikely that inflation is going to get that high within a one to three year period. The next risk they list is liquidity risk. And that's just because your money is not liquid when it's locked into this loan. You're not going to get paid out until the loan is paid off in full. And then finally, they talk about economic risk. Basically, if there's an economic downturn, the risk of people defaulting on the loans is going to increase. Between those four different risk categories, I think that that's a pretty comprehensive review of the risk that you take on by investing in these types of loans. But as you know, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. And that's why you can get these rates close to 12% interest rates by taking on these loans. So now the last thing to walk through on this page is if you scroll down, there's this investment wizard, which will try to tell you how to allocate your funds. So if I click on this link here, they'll try to set up a strategy for you based on your risk reward profile. So let's say I wanted to put $10 into here. I can choose one of these three different strategies for investing my money. So let's say I wanted to do a very high risk strategy with the potential of getting higher returns. So I'll pick a dynamic strategy. So it's giving me loans of it looks like nine to 10%. And all of these loans are graded between a C and a G. So we didn't even see G scores when we were just looking at the home page. These are definitely the riskiest ones available. On this page, you can also modify the filters that you're using to look into this. So if I really wanted to, I guess I could look at just loans that are an A or a G score. I could use these sliders to change the loan to ARV value. I could increase, say, the borrower experience. So looking at just A and G loans, it looks like this is the only one available right now. They're just doing a refi. So I'm going to back out of this video for now, but I'll let you know at the end of the video if I do end up making an investment. Ground Floor was founded back in 2013 in Atlanta with the goal of making private capital markets open for everyone. What really makes them unique is how they make you money through returns on investment loans rather than equity. While traditional REITs will sell you a percentage of a property and then if that property's value goes up, you make money. In this case, you make money just off of offering a loan to someone else and then as collateral for that loan, they have the real estate on the side. In fact, Ground Floor is the first company to be qualified by the Securities and Exchange Commission to offer real estate debt-based investments to both accredited and non accredited investors alike. And they are really the only company still that allows you to build these real estate short-term debt-based portfolios with these kinds of loans. Now this company is a startup, so they're still being financed primarily by private equity. One interesting note though is Ground Floor has actually opened itself up to be invested in by its users. Since 2018, 3,400 individual Ground Floor users have invested money into the company for a total of $14 million. That means that the company is now 23% customer owned. That personally gives me some peace of mind because I like knowing that a company is owned at least in part by its customers because I think that aligns their interests better with the interests of their customers. Over the past seven years, ground floor investors have averaged a return of 10% with 12% in 2019. Now, obviously past returns are no guarantee of future success, but that's still really good to hear. They also say that in 2019, they had over 75,000 users with $100 million invested through the platform. Now, I wonder if that decreased a little bit in 2020 because they haven't updated their stats recently, but even so, I'm sure they still have a very decently large user base. And up through 2019, Ground Floor had made 1,542 loans in 31 different states in the US. So now we've walked through the platform and we've talked about how they got started, but how does Ground Floor actually make money? It turns out it's pretty simple. They simply charge the borrower two to four and a half percent the principal of the loan as an origination fee. So take that $100 million that has been invested through Ground Floor. Ground Floor probably made around two to four and a half million dollars off of that. So anyone in the US can invest in ground floor. You don't have to be an accredited investor. And then
they also recently opened up the platform to people outside the US. Now there are some additional restrictions there. You need to transfer a minimum of $5,000 if you live outside the US, while the minimum in the US is only $10. And lastly, I told you I would let you know if I ended up investing in any of the projects on this website. So let's look into that now. So back in the investment wizard here, I decided to look up filters on just the most risky loans available just to see what the highest payout I could possibly receive was. Now you can see here that the only loans available are one A loan, one B loan, and three C loans. There's none in the other categories. So I decided to look just at C loans. And when I search for that here, there's three loans that pop up. One at 9.5%, one at 9%, and one at 10%. Now the remaining term on these loans, this one is 10.3 months, this is 10.9, and this is 4.6. So the 4.6 loan is kind of tempting just because you could receive 9% back in a shorter period of time. But based on what I've seen, these loans often don't go all the way to term. So I decided to not focus too much on the term and instead just look at the interest rate. Now I have absolutely no way of really evaluating how risky these different loans are, and I'm only putting $10 into this so I figured I would just put my money into whatever has the highest potential rate of return and see what happens. I'm going to put $10 into this last one here. I'll authorize these two things and click purchase. And so here we are, here's the results. I invested $10 at a 10% interest rate. So now that I've actually made an investment, I can go to this new section here, which shows you how my investments have performed over time. Now obviously there isn't any change here because this money hasn't actually gone to work yet, but you can see here the one investment I've made, it looks like a link to that. And then also here I can track some different things like how much repayments I've received, equity. So interestingly enough, the ground floor shares that I said you could buy, I guess you can actually track within the app, which is a little bit interesting. Now, like I said earlier, I probably wouldn't invest a huge amount of money into this platform, but it, this is kind of a nice summary of all the different investments you could have. And at the bottom here, if I were to actually create a fully diversified portfolio in here, this pie chart here could actually be kind of useful for that. So let me know what you think of ground floor in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.